Right He's had a very consistent camp. Um, he's one guy that I've really uh, been pleased with in his development as a wide receiver. We didn't know really uh, going into last spring. We, we knew obviously his talents as a, as a special teams player and as a as kind of a minor contributor. I think he can do some pretty amazing things at the slot position. And, and uh, you know, if, if, if Equinemius continues to grow and, and progress, I could see him being a guy we can lean on very heavily. And then there's going to be roles for a lot of guys. Um, you know, we're, we're going to end up playing a number of receivers um, in different situations to take advantage of what their talents are and, and how they can help our offense. Well, he's, he's is, from a blocking standpoint, he's outstanding. Um, he's a very physical kid. He loves that part of the game. Um, so that's not as, as big a concern. He's a big old bodied kid who loves to throw his body around. Um, the little things as far as route running and defining routes and, and how to make space for yourself when you're getting a little pressure from a, from a defensive back and things like that, those things are going to come over time. You know, but there's no reason he can't get on the field and help us blocking. There's no reason he can't run vertical routes down the field. And, and uh, you know, we don't refer to him as 50-50 balls uh, in the wide receiver room. But uh, he's got to make those plays for us, and he's got the ability to do that. So, you know, we'll, we'll let him kind of slowly learn the other integral things of, of being a very quality wide receiver as he contributes to our football team by being out there and doing the things that he can do. Yeah, just the last couple of days in particular, I think the lights come on for Miles, and, and, and he's figured out, uh, I can do this. And uh, he's been out there uh, taking footballs away from DBs, uh, using his size, uh, using his length, and using his speed, quite frankly. He can get down the field a little bit. So uh, he's learning how to use the tools that he has uh, to his advantage and to the advantage of our offense. So uh, I'm excited about his progress. He, he looks really good. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a challenge. And one of the things we've done in fall camp is really try to put the ball down and play football. And uh, that experience for these young guys in particular, and, and you have to be willing to put them in situations where maybe you have a pretty good idea they're going to fail. But they need to learn, they need to experience failure so they can experience some growth along the way as well. And that's, that's a situation that we've probably done more of this year in this camp than we have in the last couple camps just because we've had some experience there that kind of kind of knew what it was what it meant if it was third and five that you got to carry your route a couple yards beyond the sticks instead of catching a three yard hitch and getting tackled and we got to punt and just little things like that that they need to get out there and just play and, and just learn how to do things the right way in critical situations when it means the most. Yeah, he's been great in the meeting room. Um, he pulls those guys aside a lot and just kind of explains our expectations. We've, we've really taken a lot of pride in the wide receiver room about the way we've played the game over the course of the last few years. And that standard is, is not going to be less for this group of guys, even though they're inexperienced. And it's his job to help me, along with Corey Robinson, and, and uh, you know, help keep these guys playing at that high level all the time. And, and he's done a nice job of that so far. Yeah, it's been fantastic. You know, Corey is, is such a uh, loved teammate, uh, respected teammate, uh, somebody that the guys have always looked up to because of his work ethic and um, his smarts, his intelligence, his ability to learn the game very quickly. Um, so when he says something to them, they know it's coming from the right place. Um, I love that dynamic with the W's because Coach Kelly has really taken a nice active role with the W's in particular and those young guys over there. Uh, with Corey, um, the good cop, bad cop thing. I think both of them kind of relish their roles. Coach Kelly relishes being the bad cop, and I think uh, you know Corey relishes being the good cop, and it's it's a good mix. Yeah, I'm, I'm closer to the bad cop than I am the good cop, especially with young guys, because I just I just one of the things I think we need to really enhance with the wide receiver guys being young guys is they just have to understand the compete level that it takes to be successful. Uh, playing against the teams that we've got to play against. And uh, it's slow to come, but man, it's been very positive. The signs have been very positive over the course of the last few practices that they're getting it. They, they kind of understand that, you know, if they're pulling on you, grinding on you, <clears throat> excuse me, tugging on you, can't distract you. You got to go do your job and you got to make plays. You have to, you have to make sure the instructions that you give them are very specific to what you want them to do uh, because they just don't know. You know, they, you, may, you can't assume that they have all the information that they're going to need to go out on the field and be successful. You know, when you've got 
some three-year starters and two-year starters or whatever. You know, there's a lot of things I don't have to say to Torrey Hunter anymore that when he was a freshman, I had to make sure he understood a lot better so he could, you know, go out and play with comfort and, and, and play fast. So there is some different aspects to it. I, I think what doesn't change is the standard that we hold ourselves to in the wide receiver room. And regardless of whether you're a freshman or a senior, there's a standard of the way we're supposed to be playing the game, and that I won't compromise. So some things I can be patient about, a, a wrong route, uh, you didn't get your block, okay, I, I, you're a young guy, I got it, okay? You need, you need some more development where that's concerned. I'll help you do that, we'll get through that. But effort and compete level and things like that, the standards that we play with, I don't care if you're a freshman or not, you better be playing that way. Yeah, all the way back in recruiting, uh, it's competitiveness and, and their willingness to, to lay it out there uh, in all areas, uh, whether that's blocking, route running, uh, competing for you know, a 50-50 ball, how they go about their business, um, all that stuff. I'm very, very critical when we're recruiting guys that they are total football players uh, before they ever get here. So um, the technique stuff and the missed assignments and the wrong routes and all that, that, that stuff can all get cleaned up. Uh, if you don't understand the level that it takes to compete to be successful at this level, that's a long grind. Uh, and we're fortunate. We've got some guys that are learning that very quickly, and uh, I look for good things from those guys. Chris has been fantastic. I mean, I have nothing but positive thoughts about what Chris is doing and how he's doing it. Um, you know, he is in a position, I think, right now I'd say he's, he's in the mix to get on the field. I mean, I really think we'll play probably around nine wide receivers at different times during this season. Um, so we're, we're going to put those guys out there. And uh, I think they'll be ready for it. And uh, he'll be one of the guys that you see out there playing. It seems like maybe other than CJ, he brings something that nobody else really brings to that group. He's got dynamic speed and explosiveness. There's no doubt about that. If you, if you want to single cover Chris Fink, then you got issues. Uh, now, he's a little slight, so he gets bumped around a little bit when they're zoning and when they're, you know what I mean, when they're really grinding on vertical releases. He's got work to do there. Um, but there, there's certainly areas where he can he can help our football team. It, the longer that I've been here, it's become very clear to me. Um, you really know probably in the first couple conversations with a kid whether he's going to really be a fit here or not. And it doesn't make a lot of sense to burn a lot of gas on guys that you know aren't fits here. Um, and it doesn't mean that they're from a, right, a Catholic school somewhere. It, it can mean they're from a public school, but who they are as people fits into the culture that is here. And if you fight too hard against that, you're going to end up losing those battles anyway. So put yourself in a position where you're recruiting the right guys, number one. And then Mike has done an incredible job with our message getting out through social media, through the things that we've done, you know what I mean, through the changes we've made in the recruiting office. Um, that now we're every day Notre Dame's in your face as a recruit. And if you do fit those characteristics that would be a good fit here, it, and once, they, once we get them here, that's always been the key and always will be the key. But once we get them here, it's hard for them to ignore it. Um, and they see it as well as we do, and it usually happens pretty quickly.